Hello YouTube, welcome to Panzer Corps with the Lieutenant Joker. Now I wanted to show you that intro because I really like it. I think it's very well done because it shows kind of <laughs> a little bit uh, innovation in using these 2D silhouettes to make a nice battlefield, which pretty much shows you what this game is about. It is a 2D game, but it is still very, very immersive. And to give you an idea what the gameplay is all about, I'm going to start uh, the tutorial campaign. Welcome to our Dresden training ground, Sir Oberst. You are here to master a revolutionary new form of warfare, Blitzkrieg. Over the coming days, we will instruct you on the rules of warfare and test your mettle in several training exercises. Should you successfully complete your training, you will be given command of a newly formed Panzer Corps. But first, you must earn it. For your first training exercise, you will use the forces at your disposal to seize control of your objectives. In all of our training simulations, the cities and airfields you control will be marked red, while cities your enemy controls are marked as blue. Once you have taken control of all primary objectives, the exercise will be complete. You may wish to destroy supporting units located adjacent to your objectives to make the battle less costly for your forces. But remember that in Blitzkrieg, a slow victory is no victory at all. We will be watching your progress from two observation bunkers. Do not disappoint me. So yeah, you get a briefing for all of these scenarios and you basically have a set of turns in which you can complete stuff. Uh, in the base game, a later campaign changed this uh, um, mechanic slightly, but usually you have a, a number of turns, and you have a number of turns in which you have to complete it to get a decisive victory. If you use all the turns, you get a marginal victory, and if you can't do it in uh, all the turns, you lose, of course. Now. I leave this uh, tutorial message on, but let me quickly uh, comment on something out of that uh, briefing. Now, Blitzkrieg was actually something that uh, was kind of invented during the war as a uh, doctrine. There actually never was a real Blitzkrieg doctrine in the German military, and the principle be principles behind it had been, uh, yeah, pretty much German tradition. The, the principle of decisive thrust in one uh, point and in large-scale envelopment had all been around before. Also Guderian wasn't as influ influential as most people think. Uh, most of his influence came from, his, from the books that he himself wrote. Uh, other people were more responsible for that and this, the thing that made Blitzkrieg so uh, successful in Second World War was simply that the technology was there, the tanks were there, and the close, Steve, uh, the close support, air support was there, the Stukas and all that. Simply the weapon systems necessary to bring that kind of strategy and tactics to a maximum effect was there. But let's go into the game. Now it is Hexfield based, as you may see. As you may see here, I uh, actually put the corners of the Hexfields to a minimum here, but they still it still should be visible. Now the tactical map. That's what you see here. That's where all the units are. Now the red units um, that have any red cities, we start over here. So these are actually mine. Now these are colored a little bit more brown. That's my opposing force. Now these are all German troops, of course, since we are in a training scenario here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Scrolling the map. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Zooming the map. Well, I can zoom one step out, but uh, that's not really important. I can zoom out like this. There's also a strategy map. Well, you see a little bit more overview. On this, uh, it doesn't actually give you much of an advantage because the, the map is so small. You can also switch between air units and ground units, of which I don't have any. I just have ground units, no air units yet. There's stuff like bunkers, which uh, units that basically pretty much are in place that cannot move. But uh, let me not talk so much, let me actually get going. Now units have a certain spotting range which I uh, can actually show you here now that uh, symbol over there is spawning. So this unit only sees one hex, so it sees everything here. Anything further it can't see. So I can approach here pretty much at my leisure as long as I stay out of that guy's spotting range. He probably wouldn't come out to attack me anyway. Most of these units actually have a transport. For example, if I buy a unit here, 
you can see infantry and towed stuff like artillery which I can't buy right now for this scenario has transports initially there's just an opal blitz uh, well lorry or truck later on you get half tracks and stuff like that tanks of course don't need that they are self-propelled units now actually there's there's all these kinds of uh, uh, types here infantry tanks recon vehicles anti-tank units artillery, anti-aircraft, and then the three uh, Air Force units, fighters, tactical bombers, and strategic bombers. Now, during the course of, the, of these games, I will uh, go a little bit more into what these units are actually for and what their speciality is. For now, just focus on the units that we have here, infantry and tanks. Tanks are very good on open terrain, infantry is better to attack close terrain. Close terrain is usually cities, forests, hills, stuff where tanks have a, have a little bit of trouble uh, putting their range into effect. The big advantage that tanks have, of course, is their armor and their range. And in close defense, where infantry actually has enough hiding space to get close to tanks, they could go around the sides of the tanks, attack the sides, they can also get much closer to attack them with anti-tank weapons, so the uh, tanks have no longer the advantage of staying out of range, because they simply don't see that far. So in that kind of terrain, infantry is a lot more, a lot better to do stuff. Then comes artillery, which is a supporting weapon, I will show you that in the next... Well, there's actually inf uh, artillery on the opposing side, so I will show you that in a moment. Now, when you have moved all units, you can pretty much end the turn. Then uh, the opposing team has a move on this map. The opposing team doesn't actually do very much. So, let me just advance my forces here. Now, the reason why I'm not attacking yet will be apparent in a moment. And again, the opponent doesn't do anything in his turn. Now I'm going to attack here in this way because I want to get more forces onto the city. Here, mass attack. There is a value that is marked efficient, uh, initiative, which is this one, which for tanks basically means uh, what kind of range they have to be in, uh, able to engage first. For infantry, it has some other properties uh, like their efficiency and their training and, and stuff like that. Especially in close to rain, range doesn't play any role. But in initiative basically means who shoots first. Now, if you attack simultaneously with several units from different directions, you get actually an initiative bonus over the enemy, so you actually have a much better chance of defeating them. So, it is very. Uh, of a very big advantage to use that as often as you can especially in close terrain because in close terrain especially in close terrain every other terrain allows that too but close terrain to a more degree units can entrench which you will, can see from this little bit of shovel here they have five entrenchment that goes up to eight and entrenchment gives certain defense bonuses and also gives the enemy a chance to achieve rocket defense which is simply a very very strong uh, defense which gives a lot of bonus uh, boni to uh, the defending unit and you can uh, reduce that chance by going for a mass attack so let me do that here there, there you go that was a rocket defense so I'm probably gonna take quite a few losses here yeah unfortunately I didn't have enough on a, of an advantage but now I seem to have the upper hand and there we go that unit is gone and I can use this unit to take the city. I have moved now. This unit took a lot of losses. That was a little bit of bad luck. But that's also part of the game. There's a certain element of chance involved. Which I find on this abstract level um, very, very yeah, positive. Because you can actually turn that off and you get kind of a chess mode where everything is predetermined. So anything that you get as a battle preview will actually happen. On this kind of an abstract level, these unit icons represent roughly something like a red, like a battalion-sized unit. So an infantry battalion going against another infantry battalion that will never just go as planned, in my opinion. So I like a little bit of random turns involved here. 
So tanks can often be used because of their speed to go round units and just attack from behind. Yeah, it's warning me here that I shouldn't use the tank for close to rain attack, but I'm not planning to. I'm actually going to attack this artillery. Now our property that artillery has, uh, which is why it is good that I forced it to retreat here. I'm going to go into that, how that works in a minute. Artillery, if you attack a unit that has artillery next to it, artillery will shoot at you first in a kind of the defensive mode. Now on the offense you can use artillery of course to reduce entrenchment that gets reduced with every attack. Now since a unit cannot uh, counter a ranged attack, artillery can pretty much shoot as a unit without that unit being able to shoot back. Now ranged attack is basically what artillery is for, uh, I cannot buy one so I have to show it to you here. Now this is range. Now normal units have uh, range 0, that basically means they can only attack something right next to them and those can shoot back. Everything larger than 0, uh, 1, 2, 3 or more, means you can have a ranged attack. Now ranged attack of 1 can also shoot just one hex next. But as a ranged attack, that means the opponent won't have a chance to shoot back because you're not shooting from much distance, but it is more distance than an immediate contact attack. So, also artillery has a property that is stronger than with other units, although all unit ca units cause it, which is suppression. Now you can either damage a unit uh, in which case the uh, health points go down or you can suppress a unit. Now and for normal units that means if in a combat you suppress a certain number of units those units won't be able to shoot back. Um, so a number a unit that causes a lot of suppression can go in and cause a lot of damage without the enemy being able to shoot back with a lot of what it has left. Now artillery has the property that whatever suppression it causes actually remains on that unit until another unit attacks. So it is kind of a preparatory attack. So you attack first with artillery to suppress the target and then you go in with your regular troops. Now it tells me here that I can actually reinforce these units and ask for uh, resupply. So I could put these units back on 10 strength, but uh, this is my last target that I need to take, so I will uh, refrain from that because it will actually cost me prestige. Now in these tutorial scenarios, which are very, very easy, I don't really need to be that conservative on my prestige values, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Now that artillery saw my tank here, so it attacked him. He could have attacked this one and caused a lot of damage because units in trucks are very vulnerable but it didn't have spotting on those units because the artillery also sees just one field. Now tanks are very very uh, well protected against artillery attacks so I wasn't very uh, worried about it attacking my unit. Now that the artillery protection is gone I can move in here and attack again from several directions. And I get a rocket defense again. Now I'm very unlucky with this now. And another rocket defense. Jesus Christ, I'm really having bad luck here. But I don't have any artillery available in this scenario, so I can't really do much about it. Should I actually be attacking? Yeah, I could try. Yeah, that was actually a good result. So there we go. These are victory hexes, these glowing hexes, those are uh, the ones that you need to take to win the game. There are also a certain number of normal hexes which have the flag but are not uh, victory hexes. They simply have a flag that doesn't glow. They have a circle here that it doesn't have this golden uh, outline. Those hexes just give you prestige for conquering them. So uh, it is advantageous to take them, but you don't need to take them to uh, win, the, win the map. So they are kind of an optional target, which uh, gives you prestige, but you shouldn't take them uh, if you run out of time. I have a decisive victory here. Now I could save the replay. I will do this for future uh, videos because uh, the regular uh, scenarios are a lot more difficult so I need to think a lot and I certainly wouldn't be able to put that in a video of any uh, normal length 
So I will save replay so I can show you the turns that I made a little bit more quickly. And also I don't really want to do live commentary on difficult scenarios because I will simply mess up my turns. But for this tutorial it will be fine. So let's go on. Now outstanding work here. Unfortunately these are not voiced so I'm gonna read it to you. Outstanding work I Oberst. You managed to secure all of your objective with ample time to spare. <coughs> Should you continue to perform at this level you will often find favorable assignments will be yours for the taking. You may also be rewarded with powerful and unique weapons and troops. We expect the best and we reward the best. That sounds Welcome well. Welcome to your second training scenario, Herr Oberst. I trust you are prepared. Your new objectives are a series of fortifications due north of your forces. Once you have occupied all primary targets, the scenario will be complete. A rival training officer has been placed in command of these blue troops. Do not allow him to prevail. In preparation for your upcoming simulation, we are granting you access to reconnaissance and artillery units. Recon units are good tools for scouting out enemy positions, and artillery batteries are excellent at softening up entrenched enemy units from a safe distance. You have also been granted additional core unit slots that you may fill with units of your choosing. Your core units will stay with your command from scenario to scenario and throughout your campaign. If you lead your troops well, they will serve you throughout your career. Remember to pay close attention to new equipment that becomes available to you during the army management phase that follows these briefings. Think of this as a chance to review your core as well as your upcoming mission. I hold you responsible for the welfare of your men. Yeah, that should be. So here, uh, sometimes you get a screen when new equipment becomes available that is based on real life dates. So uh, whatever the date of this scenario is, it unlocked new uh, units that I can buy. So we get uh, Panzer Grenadiers now. Uh, well, actually Grenadiers, they weren't called Panzer Grenadiers at this stage yet. Panzer 1B instead of the Panzer 1A that we have right now. A, uh, two types of recon cars, armored cars. And one type of artillery, a 7.5cm uh, Feldkanone, which is what the FK stands for, uh, which basically means field cannon. It's a small uh, close range artillery piece, more like an assault gun than an actually field artillery. So the deployment phase is something that uh, happens in every scenario after the first one. Now, in here you have the units in your core. Now the difference between these, if I deploy one of those, you see that we actually have a golden uh, outline around those instead of the silver one of these. Now these are uh, auxiliary, um, auxiliary units, which basically means these I get under my command for this one scenario, but after this scenario I won't have any control over these anymore. My core units, that was what he meant with core unit slots, uh, you have a certain number of slots of core units for every scenario, which basically means how many of your core units you can deploy. Now there is a uh, there is a concept of reserve here, so you actually can have more units than you can deploy, but those will stay in reserve. You can deploy them if, in case you lose one of your units, uh, which you actually shouldn't do, or you can just keep them around for any future scenario and li have like specialized troops like Fallschirmjäger or Bridge Engineers, which you only deploy in certain scenarios where you need them. Now these core units, I'm gonna undeploy this one because I need to do something else with them. These core units you keep throughout the entire campaign and as you can see here they gain experience and gain these little stars. And the more experience these units get, the more, well the better they get. They get certain bonae for, uh, uh, for these stats, which differ from unit type to unit type, so I'm not going to go into that, I don't know them by heart uh, anyway. But just keep in mind, no, uh, the more experienced these units are, the better they get. Now, the reason why I didn't inf reinforce these units during this scenario is uh, because reinforcements during this deployment phase is simply cheaper. Actually, normal replacements are uh, free. You can do that um, 
any time in the deployment phase and it won't cost you anything. Elite reinforcements are not for free but they're still cheaper than during the scenario. Now what elite replacements do is you get veteran forces so you don't lose experience. If you use normal replacements you basically get green troops and well if you have four normal units with your experience and then you add six green troops uh, to your uh, to your mix to fill them up to 10 anymore well you have 60% green troops with zero experience and 40% uh, with your experience so that is uh, yeah exactly um, calculated what the uh, resulting experience would be so you actually lose experience here it actually tells me a would go to down to 40 experience if I do it with this with these ones I will actually keep my experience now I don't really need that much experience in these training scenarios especially since I won't keep these troops for my later main campaign so I don't really care so I go for the free um, for the free replacements now what I'm going to do here in the deployment phase which you can do during scenario but it is also more expensive I think and you can only do it in a friendly city I think is upgrade you can upgrade a unit into a more modern force now that has the advantage that you keep the experience of these forces you don't have to buy that unit new and also certain uh, number of types like if the t if the unit has the same equipment family which for example in this case is the panzer one um, i can upgrade them for a little bit cheaper than it would be to buy the entire unit new now if I would upgrade from a Panzer 1 to a Panzer 3, that wouldn't be the same family so I have to pay the full price, but I would still have the advantage that it is still the same unit and keeps all its experience and I got, just give the guys new equipment. Now as you can see here uh, in this screen you get a little comparison view. On the left side you have the old unit, on the right side the new. So you see it is a little bit more expensive, it had slightly less fuel, but it has more ammunition and higher, in higher initiative. So I'm going to take this one. I'm also going to buy one more of these. Um, I tried to build up a little bit of a panzer division here, which basically means I build uh, two regiments of infantry, uh, which each has two battalions of infantry. I also want uh, two, tank uh, two tank battalions. Um, I want an artillery piece. I actually want more than one artillery piece. I have one artillery piece here in reserve as an auxiliary so I'm only, only gonna buy two so I have in total three which a, uh, inf which a Panzer Division had and yeah what I can buy one more actually hmm, well I could use a Pioneer uh, a Battalion but Pioneers are not available so I'm going for a Grenadier I'm also gonna motorize all my units so they can actually move further so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Units in reserve 9 actually, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So yeah, I can actually not deploy all of these, but I don't care. I will be able to deploy them in the next phase. So let me first deploy all my uh, tanks here. Then my artillery. Let me actually check how much you can deploy here. Yeah, let me keep that one artillery in reserve and deploy my grenadiers and that one infantry so yes you can see i have two units more in reserve now i cannot deploy them here but i bought them anyway because i have the prestige and i will be able to use them in the next scenario so let's go ahead i didn't buy another recon car because i got one for uh for free here as an auxiliary force now the recon cars have recon movement which means they can actually move forward and if they have any movement points left, they can move back. So they can take a peek and then quickly retreat. But they didn't see anything, so I can move them forward again. Now I'm staying out of this uh, valley here because it's all close to rain, especially the mountains. Very bad idea for uh, tanks to go there. Going to deploy. Yeah, upgrade. I can upgrade in the city, but I didn't really want to do that. Now I need to be careful to block any enemy movement here so they can actually attack my uh, vulnerable units in the trucks. Now the ter in terms of movement, certain terrain costs more movement points than uh, others. For example, mountain is very hard to uh, pass. 
There's also a concept of, of zone of control, which some of you who have played Hexfield uh, strategy games before might be familiar with. Now, if a unit moves to a hex that is right next to one of my units, it cannot move any further than that. It will be blocked. So you may think, okay, these trucks might be reachable, reachable by this infantry, but first of all, they don't have any spotting in them, and even if they tried, they if they moved here to get around here, they would be blocked by this unit, so they ha would have to go around and in the forest they would lose movement points so they wouldn't have the range anymore. Just as much as they can't move around here because they would either be blocked at this field because they're next to this one or at this one because they're next to these. So they can't actually get into this hex because they are blocked in these two. That is very important, you don't want to have a closed front because you can actually be forced in a surrender, which I will go into later. It is more advantageous to keep these uh, gaps open and just block the passage of these gaps with your units with the help of zone of control. Now this opponent, I need to be a little bit more careful, he will be more offensive. So, uh, need to be a little bit more careful, but infantry in the open can be easily attacked by tanks. I don't know, however, whether my opponent has any tanks of his own, so I need to be a little bit more careful here. Now, my recon car sees further than other units. Obviously, it is a recon unit. Um, so I'm using it to scout out enemy positions here and find out what I may be facing. Still nothing. As you can see, I move my tanks here further forward. Now I have them in a position where they pretty much block all the passage by enforcing a zone of control. So the enemy cannot move to these hexes. So on this line, I can easily move my units without any danger of being detected or being or the enemy being able to attack me there because they simply cannot pass these units. So I can safely move up my units and behind the shield of my tanks. Because they will block the enemy and intercept them. Still no enemy contact, so let's move a little bit further up. There we are. Now I'm expecting an armored counter attack here at some point so let's advance here a little bit more carefully but I really want to move my artillery up already to be able to strike because in uh, fortified cities where the enemy is entrenched, you absolutely need artillery to go in there. You saw in the first scenario where I had to attack without artillery support, I had some bad luck and quite some losses. That is never a good idea. Okay, that attack didn't do anything, so that was bad, so I won't do anything. I will just advance. Now, I won't attack here right away because they're still too entrenched and I didn't do any suppression, but uh, I will use the fact that I can ha uh, now have artillery support, so he cannot attack my uh, in my infantry without being attacked by my artillery. It all often uh, is a virtue to stay patient and just move your units into a position so you have a good basis for attack. Never rush too much ahead. You should always have support. You need to uh, get long-term suppression. That is what I told you. Artillery causes long-term suppression. Um, you should always uh, work with your units together. They need support of each other. Uh, tanks are not very effective alone because they can only work in open terrain against fortified positions or cities they don't have any chance also they need artillery support if they get attacked by other tanks so you always want to uh, make your forces support each other
can move my units up here and move further up here to just scout this out. And advance my infantry behind these lines. Now I see there is artillery protecting the station so I will use my tanks to actually flank that position and take out that artillery before that unit can attack me. These early tanks, of course, are not, these early panzers are not very effective yet, but that will change later. Now, I won't advance a lot here because I want to stay in an artillery shield, so I will move very, very carefully here. I have time enough. As you can see, I only have half the turns gone. I'm not in a rush at all. Artillery actually retreats, that will help him. Now recon cars with their very large range are very good to mop up these uh, already damaged units but you should always keep them in the back which is very good for their recon movement they can attack and then retreat so you don't want to keep them at the front they're very vulnerable targets usually against these early units they are pretty effective but later on you should be a little bit more careful going to attack and just uh, weakening these units and reducing their initial attack values get one infantry unit be, uh, behind them so I can attack also from the back and get a little bit of mass attack bonus going here just moving these tanks here in to get more mass attack bonus I'm actually not going to attack quite yet Unless I get some good suppression going on here. Nah, not really. Now nah, let's try it anyway. Oh, that was a good attack. Took a risk here, paid off. Don't want to wait around here too long. So let's move these units around and start flanking these guys. Yeah, this guy is actually... Uh, going to lose uh they'll be out of fuel this is a warning sign once this goes red he, they are out of fuel which means they cannot move and more importantly they will have a lot of trouble uh because they actually get uh get worse defense values once they're out of fuel which kind of makes sense if you think about it so y'all always want to make sure these uh, guys are under supply they can also run out of ammunition, which is uh, difficult for certain units that are low on ammunition in the first place. So we always want to keep an eye on that. That was a rugged defense, but still uh, wasn't enough to keep this unit from being destroyed. And let's see whether we can mop up this last one as well. Another rugged defense. I don't care. I want to mop this guy up now. And there we go. Excellent. Once again, you have demonstrated the skills to not only secure your assigned objectives, but do so well in advance of the time allotted. Now, shall we proceed to your next training simulation? <laughs>